guys, this is history. What you've done, what it's we've shown. done. You guys have built a platform that influences. Yeah, hey, out of it. It's the world's most dangerous morning show. Wake the fuck up, breakfast club. DJ Envy. Envy playing my record, I made it. Jess Hilarious. Jess Envy with she don't spare nobody. Charlemagne the God. What made you think the liking of controversial questions would take his part? I like this show. Thanks, Breakfast Club. Good morning, USA! Yo, 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 yo,
uh, 13% of Democrat voters voted for Dean Phillips, uh, even though he ended his campaign earlier this month in Arizona. Marion Williamson and Dean Phillips combined. Both of those folks got 6% of the vote. Now, you may say, Tez, that's just 6%. It's no big deal, but it is a big deal because um, it really just takes some margarine uh, of one thing that can flip a state. It doesn't have to be, you know, a whole lot of folks, especially when we talk about the Electoral College. want to remind you that the states that really, really matter, and I know folks don't like to hear that, but when we look at battleground states, the general election, the states that's going to make a difference. I want to remind you those states are Arizona, Georgia, Michigan, Nevada, North Carolina, Pennsylvania, and Wisconsin. So when you're looking at Michigan, remember we talked about those 100,000 people that showed up to say, we're not going for either one of y'all. That could make a difference in those battleground states. So just keep paying attention um, to the trends of what's happening, even though you know we already know who the nominees are. We are looking at trends and how that's going to make a difference yeah, it, in the general election. Yeah, I wanted to tell in a general election, like, uh, you know, what other options are on the ballot like you know you, we know it's Trump we know it's Biden you know we know in some places it'll be third party are, are, are stuff like uncommitted can you write in on ballots for a presidential election yeah you can write in you can absolutely write okay. in. absolutely mm -hmm. and it depends on you know some states have write in some states don't so I, I don't want to give an absolute but yes generally speaking you can write in and you know some folks may not vote at all at the top of the ticket I want to remind people you have over 400 congressmen uh, that will also be on the race you have some governor uh, seats that'll be on the rate on the ballot as well so there's a lot going on as we get closer to the election I want to keep bringing those up Charlemagne and remind people that it's more than just Biden and Trump on the ballot that's at stake yeah I believe in I believe in a general election there are so many people disgusted by Biden and Trump that folks are going you know vote third party they might do right in some folks going to stay home so once again uh, it's up to Biden and Trump to, 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 to focus on the people who who aren't motivated at all, who aren't inspired by either one of them. <laughs> you know, like those people that either want to stay home on the couch or if they do get up off the couch, they don't plan to vote for either one of them. It's up to Biden and Trump to energize those people and convince yeah, and them. Yeah, and you got to look at you got to look at if somebody's energized enough to go down to the to the ballot to say get somebody else to do it to that's literally right. vote uncommitted that's, that's right. the scary part for real like the couch staying at home there's always more people who vote that don't but think about that person that got up got dressed that's right drove through traffic mm -hmm. just to go down and say I'm, I'm not dealing with either one of y'all. That's, that's the right. one that's out there talking to their neighbors, their friends. So I, you can't sleep on on those on those small margins. It really does make a difference. And that's a failed campaign. Like like if you, if a person gets up to go vote for somebody else, that means that uh, Biden and Trump's campaigns failed to reach that person. That's right. Mm -hmm. What else you got? You got something? You said yeah. quick. Yeah, quickly, quick story. Uh, two former Mississippi de deputies were sentenced yesterday for breaking. You know, remember the story? They broke into a home without a warrant and tortured two black men inside. Take a listen. Egregious and despicable. Those words from a federal judge in Mississippi describing the actions of former cops Hunter Elwood, sentenced to 20 years, and Jeffrey Middleton, sentenced to more than 17 years. They, along with four others, some of whom refer to themselves as the Goon Squad, pleaded guilty to breaking into this home early last year without a warrant, then terrorizing and torturing two black men, all apparently because they stayed at this house with a white woman. The six white police officers involved in this assault sought to dehumanize their victims. Good. So long search. Yeah, long, yeah, long story short, uh, one of the former officers got 20 years. Elwood, Jeffrey Middleton was given 17.5 behind bars. Uh, more officers will be coming up uh, this week, will be sentenced. Uh, there's a lot of background in that family, so go look at this story. I want you to see what happened when they broke into these guys' house. I want you to see how these officers also had past issues in the past. Look at the charges. Look at the, the time that these guys are beginning made the homies have their way with them uh, when they get locked up. That's my personal opinion. Oh, 100%. Mm. They should have buried them under the jail. And I hope they end up in prison with a bunch of folks who grew up listening to Wu-Tang Clan 36 Chambers album. Because right. they, right. they need straight Wu-Tang torture tactics to happen to them. Okay? That's right. All right? Yeah, this was a really bad case. Mm -hmm. Time to a bedpost. Don't you flick can't. your wrist when you quote those lyrics. That's <laughs> not what they was doing. I, I, Jesus. I think he needs to take the uh, sensitive sensitivity training. I'm quoting yeah, Wu Tang. Yeah. Okay, okay. that is that is Wu Tang M E T H O D oh, man. You hear me? Yeah, and but they was real tough when they did it. You sitting here flicking your wrist, talking about time, <laughs> time today with the butt cheeks open. Like, come on, don't threaten me with a good time. Right. And I tell you one thing, they might be the goon squad, but I hope they end up in prison with the booty goons.
All right. That's right. <laughs> you know, and hey, Ray J that. will be joining us next hour speaking of booty goons. <laughs> That's right. We'll tell you all about and that. Thank you, Tez. No problem. And let me just say this. They really did bring a sex toy in to torture these guys. So, yes. May they. Uh, hey, that's right. May, may somebody spread their ass cheeks wide. An eye for yeah, an I mean, eye, dildo for a dildo. That's right. Y'all are trash. Jesus Christ. All right. <laughs> Thank you, Tess. No All problem. Right. When we come back, of course, uh, get it off your chest. 800 585 1051. If you need to vent, hit us up right now. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. It's a new day. This is your time to get it off your chest. Wait. Wake up! Whether you're mad or blessed, it's time to get up and get something. Call up now. 800-585-1051. We want to hear from you on The Breakfast Club. Hello, who's this? Yo, what's up, man? This is Joe. Joe, what up? Get it off your chest, brother. Hey, man. Listen, I agree with everything y'all was just talking about, but that, that booty stuff caught me off guard, man. Charlie, why you always talking about booty Because them, them police officers tortured that man booty You need to go read the story. They call him the Mississippi Goon Squad. They, they tortured that man with a dildo and honey and all kind of stuff. Oh, shit. Yes. Why are you bringing this up at 6 a.m., man? It's way too early for this. <laughs> that's what he's into. That's front, what he likes. It's, no, it's called front page news, and it's called Eye yeah, for an Eye. We talk about this at 12. One. I don't do 12 or 1 o'clock. I do the morning show. I do Breakfast Club. I'm sorry. Yeah. This type of stuff got a time? <laughs> exactly. I got to get my coffee, man, before I listen to you. And that man, and them, them cops got 20 years for the torturing that black man. And they tortured that black man because he was dating a white woman. Mm. Good. He deserves it. He deserves it. No, the cops deserve it, you mean. That, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, I yeah, agree. No, I yeah, 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 you got to clean, yeah, clean that up. You, 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 you sound like Dr. Dr. Umar. Dr. Umar be like, no, nah, you deserve it. You shouldn't have met a white woman. All right, man. Sorry about the butt combo. It's no, not a butt okay, combo. Man, okay. You turned into a butt no, combo. No, I did not. It's a revenge combo. And it's not even about revenge. Well, it's about they love the booty just... <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. He does. <laughs> Loves it all day long. I mean, we all got one. You should love it. I hope you clean it. Mm -hmm. Hello, who's this? It's me. D. D, what's up? Hey, Uncle Charlemagne. That's what happens, D, when you wait so long. D, you shouldn't be waiting so long. What up, D? <laughs> I got my regular ticket for the podcast, but the VIP is sold out. And I want to pitch our podcast. The VIP sold out, but the pitch your podcast thing is something totally different. Okay, but I thought it would be better if you got the VIP ticket. No, I think the pitch your podcast thing is something totally different than the VIP and the tickets. I, I Don't quote me on that, but I, I'm pretty sure it's something different. Just sign up for the pitch your podcast thing. Where, where do we sign up for that at? You know what? Let me get that information. You don't know. And I'll relay that to you. I, I, I'll make sure I relay that on the radio. I think it's too late. For okay, thank party. you. It's too late for Pitch Your Podcast? Yeah, too, they finished that in like January. Really? Mm -hmm. I asked for somebody else. Oh, Jess said it's too late for Pitch Your Podcast. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, mama. But we'll, <laughs> see, we'll see you April 27th at Pullman Yards. I, 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 I'll make sure to come see you and talk to you and all that good stuff. Don't lie to me, Charlamagne. I got you. Girl, you know we lying. All you got to do is remind me. I promise you. You know I'm getting up there in age. I'm getting up. But I, just remind me. I'll call back and do it, too. All right. That's right. Make sure you go get your tickets for the second annual Black Effect Podcast Festival happening April 27th at Pullman Yards in Atlanta, Georgia. Okay, you can go to eventbrite.com right now, uh, blackeffect.com slash podcast festival to get your tickets. That's right. Get it off your chest. 800-585-1051. If you need to vent, hit us up now. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Get it up. This is your time to get it off your chest. Keep calling. 800-585-1051. We want to hear from you on The Breakfast Club. Hello, who's this? Hi, yes, this is Shirley from Connecticut. Hey, Shirley from Connecticut. Get it off your chest. Yes, I want to get off my chest about those officers that tortured those men. Yes, ma'am. I think it's horrific Absolutely. that they can get away, that they, you know, did that to those men. I think they should be punished to the fullest. And I hope that karma gets them back for what they did. That's right. In Absolutely. prison. I hope they I get it. I hope they get what they gave out in prison. Yep. Hello, who's this? Yo, yo, this is uh comedian David Gatash from the 757, my brother. What up, what up, VA? What's going on? Get off your chest, brother. Bruh. So y'all just told that story about the police uh terrorizing that that black and white couple. Yeah. So sir. I just wanna say, man, so I'm not your conventional black man married to a white woman, but I, my wife's Caucasian. And uh it just it just hurts me because I'm just thinking, man. 
I was just trying to get my credit better, man. So I'm just trying to see <laughs> why, why the hell would they, would they be attacking these people in 2024, man? I, it just it made me it put a tear to my eye, brother. It hurt me Bro, so they, bad. They burst into this brother's home without a warrant. Mm-hmm. They beat him. They assaulted him with a sex toy. Mm-hmm. They shocked him repeatedly with stun guns. And then one of the deputies shoved the gun in his mouth and act, and, and fired the weapon. That's crazy. Hey, yeah, I want y'all to ask Dr. Umar, did he, did he like that? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Do he like what? I don't think he like any any black man getting abused and hurt like that, bro. I don't think so either. Amen. I hope not. Now I do think I Dr. Umar would create a task force to keep black men from dating white women, but I don't think he would abuse them in the process. Not at all. Jesus. Get it off your chest. 800 585 1051 Jess with the worldwide mess. Yes, you already know. Listen, there's been a security breach in the hospital after people was trying to get Kate Middleton's medical record. What? Did they get it? Well, no, no. Tell us now. Tell us when no, we come back. No, I, I got to tell you. I got to tell you. When we come back. Okay. Just with the UK news. <laughs> Just with the worldwide mess up next is The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ, MV, Jess, Larry, and Charlamagne, the guy. We are The Breakfast Club. Yes, it's time for uh, Just with the mess. Just with the worldwide mess. But, you know, her little she, pregnant she, self is... She's preparing. Waddling. Yeah, she's preparing. Waddling down the hallway. But this would be a great time to tell them about your... Uh Oh, yes. The second annual Black Effect Podcast Festival is happening April 27th in Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, We got Wallow and Gilly hitting that stage. We got the Poor Minds Podcast, Dre and Lex hitting that stage. Horrible Decisions, Mandy and Weezy hitting that stage. So go get your tickets right now at blackeffect.com slash podcast festival. Go to eventbrite.com right now to get your tickets. All right. Well, let's get to Just With The World Why Mess. You just gonna act like you wasn't just throwing up, huh? I wasn't throwing up. I was actually getting my my stories together. Totally. Now I know preparing. that I uh, teased the UK news. UK news. It's more. Don't try to make it more UE. All right. It's just <laughs> UK. Whatever. Okay. So what's more interesting is what's going on in the US. Okay. All right, so over the past two, come on. So oh, now you rushing somebody morning sickness? Absolutely. <laughs> um, I don't know who been keeping up with the Nickelodeon documentary recap, but I've seen that. It's a lot. It's a lot going on. You know, um, the docu series investigating the inappropriate and unsafe environments on Nickelodeon sh- uh, shows is out. Mm-hmm. There's a lot going on, so let's get right into it. Uh, before the doc came out, I reported that the Nickelodeon star Drake Bell came forward as a child who was sexually assaulted by Brian Peck, who was one of the writers at the network. Now we're hearing what happened. I was sleeping on the couch where I would usually sleep, and I woke up to him, and he was, uh, he was sexually assaulting me. Mm. I froze and was in complete shock and had no idea what to do or how to react i have no idea how to get out of the situation you know what am i call my mom and be like hey this just happened can you come pick me up i'll just sit here and wait i had no car i didn't drive i was 15 at this time i really don't know how to uh elaborate on that on on camera really why don't you think of the worst stuff that someone can do to somebody as a sexual assault Jesus. and that'll answer your question and it's very sad. His dad also spoke on things that he saw on set. Sometimes his dad would be on set and his mom would oversee things, but she was a little bit more lenient. But this is you hear a scuttle bit about the business and what you got to watch your kids and this and that. So I was very attentive. Very rarely set in the green room. I'd always be off set somewhere where I could always keep my eyes on Drake. And unfortunately, I started seeing Brian start to just hang around Drake too much. It didn't didn't set well with me. Drake would be in the dressing room or something and in would pop Brian, you know, do things that, wait a second, what are you doing? Drake can put that on himself. Then he'd, he'd yeah. maybe walk oh, over to no. Drake and be feeding him some lines or whatever and put his arm around his waist, put his hand up on his shoulder and kind of run it down his arm. And this would happen routinely. Damn. So, you know, instead of just removing his son off the set, you know, I guess he would say things to Brian Peck. Now, Drake's dad added Somehow, Brian Peck got him removed from the set. Really? Got his dad, yep. And his dad was replaced by his mom. And his dad told his mom, yo, don't leave Drake around Brian alone. So they they knew something. Ain't no way in hell. There's no way in hell I'm going to watch this happen to my son and they're going to tell me they're going to remove me from set? They removed me and they replaced me with his mom. I don't know if they were married or together, whatever, Mm -hmm. but he warned him. But the mom was real lenient. What was going on? I bet, uh, you know, I guess the money was so great. Um, Drake spoke on being the anonymous child in the court case that I spoke on a couple weeks ago that Mm -hmm. Brian Peck uh, was on trial for. 
on the day of sentencing for Brian. I get to the courthouse. It was the most unbelievable thing I'd ever seen. His entire side of the courtroom was full. There were definitely some recognizable faces on that side of the room. Brian had been convicted, but getting all of this support from a lot of people in the industry, and yeah, I was pretty shocked. I wasn't going to address Brian. I addressed my statement to everyone in the room, and I just said, how dare you? You will forever have the memory of sitting in this courtroom and defending this person, and I will forever have the memory of the person you're defending violating me. Jesus Christ. Yeah, so after the documentary came out, one of the older kids from Nickelodeon called Dan Snyder, who it's like basically all about, you know, who was running all of this, mm -hmm. um, to talk about things in the doc. And he agreed to have the conversation, and here's what he said. Watching over the past two nights was very difficult. Me facing my past behaviors, um, some of which are embarrassing and that I regret. And I definitely owe some people a pretty strong apology. Uh, what was his behavior? Just watching or just knowing or not doing something? We're going to get to that over, you know, because this is, I have to report on this like a couple of days. It's a mm -hmm. four-part series, and I find out something new every time, mm -hmm. like every time. It, and it's, it's really sad. Um, actors from the Nickelodeon show Ned's Declassified, that's a newer show, are they're receiving backlash for making fun of the things that were happening on the Nickelodeon set. We told you never to speak about that. Get back in your hole, Daniel. And give me your holes. Sorry, we shouldn't joke about this. We really should. Mm -hmm. Listen, our set was not like that. Uh, and no, it's awful. The 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 Drake Bell is a cr like that's crazy to hear. I I that is mm -hmm. man. And that never came out, which is really wild. Oh, so y'all were in on it. Oh, God. Damn. Wow. I'm not talking about this anymore. No. no. Not no, talking no, about no, this no, anymore. No, no. Guys, we can't joke like this. Jesus. Guys, we're. we're, we're what the hell? Sometimes yeah. humor helps us move through things, yeah. you know? 100%. Was that privately taped or no? No, that was their podcast. And now they're receiving a lot of backlash. Wow. That's why everybody don't need a podcast and they don't even need a damn job anymore. Yeah, I think, you know, what we've learned over the years is you, you might be making jokes about the abuser, but you don't realize when you're making jokes about the abuser, you're also making jokes about the abuse. Yeah, that's think we learned, we learned that with R. Kelly and everybody else. You think you're making jokes about R. Kelly, but mm -hmm. there's people that he actually peed on. Yeah, but it, but like even further than that, you know Drake Bell. You know a lot of these people. Yeah. You know a lot of these kids. Yeah. And y'all are newer at this. Thank God that you didn't have to go through this. Mm -hmm. But you're sitting up on your podcast. You're having fun. And they're receiving backlash for it. And um, now it's only going to be bigger because I'm reporting. Because y'all know I amplify. That's right. Yeah. There you go. So yep, yep, yep. Th I will be covering this story um, just like I'm covering the UK news. But I'm pushing the UK news to the second hour, y'all. Because this was very, very sad. And it needs more eyes um, on this documentary. Yeah. And I will, it's very hard to, you know hear that kind of stuff because you know when you have kids because the way my anxiety is set up you automatically start thinking what if that happened to, you, to yes. your children and yes. as a person who's been a victim of child sexual abuse it is triggering you know mm -hmm. what I mean but you, you know the uh, the crazy thing about it is usually when you expect to hear something like this you, you expect to hear it in a younger kid this was mm -hmm. a teenager yeah. he was in high school he was 15 now think about it there's times where you know you might drop your I mean, you have a lot of younger kids. Like, I might drop my son off at basketball practice and then mm -hmm. pick him up an hour later. I don't stay at the whole practice every time because he's a freshman in high school. Yeah. He's a sophomore in high school. My parents dropped me off at, at practice. Mm -hmm. You didn't know what was going to go on because he wasn't like he was a seven-year-old. No. He was a teenager. You just hope yep. your kids uh, Jesus. have to have the confidence to tell you yes. what's going on. And then your parents are there and your dad gets removed removed from the set. Your mom know what's going on, but she it, she's more lenient yeah. to what's happening. And he would just do this. Brian Peck was so comfortable, like feeding him lines and you running. You how? Why would you put your arm around his waist? And I wonder how much you ignored, how much they ignored. Yeah. As parents, just of because of the, the paycheck. That's right. Exactly. And, and I wonder the relationship between he and his parents today. Or do they think it was normal? Like, oh, they he just putting his arm around him, trying to comfort him to help him with his line. Like, nah. it just seems. It's not weird even and around strange. your shoulder. It's around your waist, nah. and you tickling my arm, and you're caressing me, yeah. like. Man, no, no. Yeah, listen to your discernment in situations like that. Yep. Especially if you, I got removed and then they put my wife there and I'm going to tell my wife, make sure you watch that. Mm -hmm. No way. Mm -hmm. If I got to say, make sure you watch that guy, something, no. It's, no. it's, it's sick. No. So, yeah. Hmm. All right. Well, that was Jess with the mess. Jess with the worldwide mess. That's worldwide. Worldwide Jess. Worldwide yeah. mess. It's, worldwide it's, Jess. In our is U.S. Yes, U.S. Next week going to the U.K. Next, next week going worldwide. And then the third hour, Thailand. 
Island? Stop, get, it's stuff going over. It's everywhere. <laughs> and we get on my face. Uh-oh. Yeah, because I know people like to go there. All right. All right. All right. All right. We'll get into that next uh, Next Tesla and Trigger will be joining us. And then Ray J is here. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. You're checking out The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ Envy, just hilarious. Charlamagne the guy. We are The Breakfast Club. Let's get some front page news. What up, Tiz? Good morning, DJ Envy, just hilarious. Charlamagne the guy. Good morning. Peace, Tiz. Let's jump right into it. Now, they're saying the U.S. abortions has, has reached the highest level in over a yes, decade. It, yes, it has, despite... Uh, as we know, Roe versus Wade was overturned, and despite that it's being banned in more than a dozen states, yes, abortions have reached the highest rate in more than a decade. Take a listen. A report out this morning claims abortions have reached their highest rate in more than a decade. The study, done by the Guttmacher Institute, shows there were more than a million abortions in the U.S. in 2023. That is a 10% jump from 2020. It also shows that medication abortion is a more common option than ever. The Guttmacher Institute is a research and policy organization focused on reproductive health that supports abortion rights. This increase comes despite bans on abortions in more than a dozen states following the Supreme Court ruling in 2022. I wonder how much of that is because of finances. Like a lot of people simply can't afford to have have kids, especially right now. Yeah, yeah, a lot of that has to do with, I mean, that's one of the things that people are talking about when they talk about reproductive rights and why people have abortions. And yes, Charlamagne, that's one of the reasons a lot of people can't afford to have children. A lot of them may be medical issues. It could be a number of, you know, reasons why, but that's absolutely in the data. Or what people I find using the uh, abortion pill and some of those medication yep. abortions as kind of like condoms, you know? Mm. I wonder if that's the case as well. So we're talking about two different things. So Charlemagne is saying the reasons why people get an abortion and you're saying what envy like using the pill as just a way to a contraceptive uh, like, like a plan yeah. to be Contrac- safe. Um, yep. Gotcha. Yeah. Well, that's always been a topic, you know, where people say, hey, you know, I'll, I'll just be as risky as I possibly can. And then at the end of the day, if it doesn't work out, I'll just get an abortion. Mm-hmm. That That's certainly I mean, we I'm sure all of us have known somebody or somebody didn't know somebody that have done that as well. And that's why this Roe versus Wade um, issue uh, really scared a lot of folks, because now you just don't have that as something you can just, you know, as a backup plan to just go get an abortion. You actually are going to have to, you know, I guess, you know, be more careful in your choices. But what I find interesting about this is Roe versus Wade will be one of the things that Democrats will be pushing uh, this year in the election, saying that, you know, Roe versus Wade is on the ballot. And uh, President Biden has said that if he is reelected, he will make sure that that gets, uh, you know, back overturned. And, you know, they'll be fighting for that. Obviously, on the conservative side, they want to see it banned everywhere. So this is just going to be interesting to see how, despite even it being banned, people are still, you know, you're not stopping women from getting abortions. Yeah, I, you know, I'm, I'm pro-choice. That's why I do like uh, I do like the messaging that I saw the vice president, you know, put out uh, last night, I believe. She said Donald Trump openly talks about how he is proud that he overturned Roe v. Wade. He is proud that he took the right to choose from millions of women and people around America. He is proud that young women today have fewer rights than their mothers and grandmothers. How dare he? So I do like the messaging of, you know, making it an, an attack, attack on women's rights. Like you're taking away, I mean, you're taking away somebody's right to choose. That's right. You know, so I, I, I do like that uh, that angle she took yesterday. Even though I, I mean, I, I'm sure she truly believes that, but I do like that angle. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I want to say this: um, when you're hearing the word reproductive rights, because every single time somebody comes and says, "What do you mean reproductive rights?" Reproductive rights is not just about getting an abortion and not getting an abortion. It's also about preventing getting pregnant. To DJ Envy's point, where you don't have to take a Plan B. Mm-hmm. There's also something called birth control. There's also something you know whether you're taking pills, whether you have um Deprivera shot. All mm-hmm. of those things where women are taking responsible measures to be able to say, you know what? I don't want to have a baby, so I'm going to go make sure that I get birth control. That is also a part of reproductive rights. Also, reproductive rights is the ability to be able, like we talked about the story a couple of weeks ago, the ability to be able to get uh, in vitro. That is a part mm-hmm. of reproductive rights. Mm-hmm. To have a baby, that choice is a part of reproductive rights. So when you're hearing reproductive rights, and I get it, there's a lot of conservatives out there to say I am pro-life, but I need you to understand Understand that that word reproductive rights is more than just having an abortion or not having an abortion. It's right. also the ability to have a child if you choose, if you want a child. Mm-hmm. So we got to be careful in that language. So crazy, man. Thank that's, you, Taz. I just don't understand why you would want that. Like, why are you taking away people's rights? That's, yeah, that's that. insane to me yeah. too. Like you, either you never got the wrong person pregnant, all right, mm-hmm. or you just don't like Ron in peace. Jesus. 
But not only that, you want you want the right to make the choice that you want to make that's best for you yeah. and your family. Yeah. And you never you take can't away take somebody's, that away from somebody's right. You never no, take away somebody's crazy. ability to choose. Anytime you take away somebody's uh, ability to choose, that's criminal. All right. Well, thank you, Tez. You can follow at Teslin Figaro on all social media platforms. And you can subscribe to Teslin Figaro's podcast, the Straight Shot No Chaser podcast on the Black Effect iHeartRadio podcast network. What, her Wi-Fi went out? Yeah, Wi-Fi went right out. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? Yeah, all right. That just disappeared from it's the gone. screen. Gone. Yeah. All right. Like somebody snatched it. You sure she all right? Yeah, yeah I think she all right. Tez, blink twice. Hey, we can't see her. She's gone. She's going. Blink. She going. <laughs> oh, yeah, you're right. Blink, blink twice. <laughs> <laughs> All right, when we come back, Ray J will be joining Lord us. Have we mercy. kick it with Ray J. Now, this interview goes a little left, it goes a little right, it goes all over the it place. It goes Ray J. Oh, bear, oh, bear with us with this. It goes one. Ray J. This is Willie, this is Willie Ray Norwood Jr. That's right, he goes <laughs> off Mike a little bit. He's, yeah, just, yeah. All right, it's, yeah, it's Ray J. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Everybody, it's DJ NV Jess Hilary, Charlamagne the guy. We are the Breakfast Club. We got a special guest in the building. Hello, this, 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 this not a guest, man. This is no, our guy. He's our not family guest. member. Okay, this is our guy. He, this is the first guest you see yourself that when was that wall. ever in Period. studio uh-huh. here at the Breakfast Club. First yes. guest. First guest. Yes. And it was our first big viral moment also. That's, not I'm, the talking, same time. I'm talking about two, two different, different situations. Moments. You hear me? Okay. <laughs> you hear me? Two Always moments. very important to preface with that. You right. hear me? Ladies and gentlemen, Ray J's in the Ray building. Ray J. Hey, I love. Man, I'm so happy to see y'all. I'm just holding it in. I'm happy to and see I'm you so too, happy brother. to see you. Thank you. I'm happy to see you too. Yeah. What's happening, Willie What's Ray? What's up, man? We got a new network. I see. Ooh. I see. First of all, I need. Let, 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 what happened with uh with Raycon? Nothing. It's just you know we've reached like a certain height, right? Mm-hmm. And I think that they can definitely continue to move mountains with the company going into like you know home products and stuff like that. I always just like to have fun. Mm -hmm. Like, if it's not fun and it's a little too critical or a little too exhausting, which it wasn't, but just to be in an arena like starting our own network, you know, 20 years in that space, Mm -hmm. our expertise and knowledge and the way we shoot stuff and our story arcs, everything is probably, to me, better than everything that's out there now. So So you still have equity in Raycon? No, no, no. You Shout built, out to Raycon. But you built yeah. that though. Like that that, yeah, that brand yours. is that brand because of you. But he built it yeah. and sold it. So you sold it. Yeah, and I, well I sold I sold it back to Raycon. Got you. Got yeah, you, I sold you, it back you. to Raycon. I, I you know, it wasn't for sale yeah. um for another investor to come in. God, I gotta get you some lotion. I know, that's what I was saying. And then I, I needed the lotion and the brush. You don't need the brush. And it's I was in just... my bag. Now I'm just like, you know what? I'm good. I'm humble. So what's so, the name of this network? The network is called the Tronics Network. Why they call the Tronics Network? The Tronics Network because it's we look at the Tron as like a matrix, you know what I'm saying? Like a manifestation tool. Um, that's the only reason why we're still here is just because of prayer and, and manifestation and making adjustments when you make mistakes mm-hmm. to, for for growth. Mm-hmm. Um, so Tronics, you know, I had the Raytronics company uh, before we sold Scooty Bike, and we just we, we felt like the Tron was speaking to us from the Elohim. And so, you know, Tronics Network is that digital ratchet reality network that's at the cutting edge of the change. You're going to be competing with Zeus. Well, if I'm competing with Zeus, I'll be competing with myself. Mm, talk okay. more about that. If you could help. I'm just saying, I mean, remember Bow Wow and I, was in, uh, we, we pulled up and I was talking I about that. Zeus. Yeah, talking about working that. with Zeus. And then Bow yeah, yeah. Wow was going big. I'm like, that's my people. We're partnering. Yeah, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. That, that's, that was the beginning. Right. Right. That was the beginning of their kind of Got it. They, so, people started to recognize Zeus when we did the conversation. We started with the conversation. Yeah. We gave Zeus their first fight, which sounds a little, you know, but um, <laughs> we gave Zeus their first fight, which was Roly and Mangina. Mangina's on our new network. And then their other biggest fight. These are the things that kind of ignited them to kind of drive the narr- narrative that way. Hazel Lee and Masika. Mm. Right. So those two things, you saw this big flux go up and then. Mm-hmm. And then it all, it all, you know. Like you we, own a part of Zeus? No. Oh, nope, yeah. nope. And you know we, we had shows on Zeus stuff. Yeah, we had the best shows, like even baddies. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. I mean, a lot of a lot of people get amnesia. Right. Because you so, said competing with yourself makes, makes no. it seem like you know, yeah, you it is. Both, you own both. Well, we're not competing against myself as ownership, but we did this network not solely to to compete against Zeus, um, but to just give you a balance of what it looks like, right? So you got all of this, but if we give you that same kind of intensity with a with a story arc that leads you somewhere, whether it's emotional or crying or or happy or whatever it is, educational, mm-hmm. 
something has to be there to create the story so people can follow something. If not, then for me, I don't do that kind of show. And I want to show people like what a ratchet show and a balanced show looks like at the same time. What right. does that look like? Yo, bro, That's yo. actually R&B if you think about it. R&B? Ratchet and balanced. Wow. We're brainstorming. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> so, um, it, it, you know, yo, we have one show. Mm -hmm. I haven't called you guys to tell you about it, but you guys start the show off. It's the Breakfast Club kicks. It's like you guys are in this like. How do we start it if you didn't tell us about it? We don't know anything about this, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> it's a really good show, right? Okay. So, it's called The Fight Club. Mm -hmm. I'm going to show you guys. It's a really good show. And then you'll see what it is. It's light. I mean, it's, it's like. fighting. Yeah, it's people fighting, but that show is catered for that. So there's a lot of other shows. Like we have Inside the Network, we have Going on a Safari, we have uh, The Girls Club, uh, The Cook Off. Like we have shows like that. But then, just like the conversation, I felt like people were like teasing you, and then they started to get to this deep conversation. When when we did it, it's just let's go right into it. Same What's with the, the Balance fight? and Fight Club, though. There's like, no there, the, the the Balance and Fight Club is the comedic. Like edit with the fighter, right? You started to say there is no balance. I, I was mean, when you first start because that was the truth. <laughs> because I think that. there there isn't a balance in trying to create another story only to end at the fight, right? Got you, got you. It's straight about what it is, but it's com it's comedic, it's refreshing. The jokes are going. So when you're watching it, you're not like disgusted mm -hmm. if you were just to watch it and hit play which we do have all the bonus footages on all the shows you get like five or six clips and you can just watch it unedited how much is subscription $4.99 $4.99 yeah mm. but it's premium this is the premium yeah. stuff any scripted drama you know comedy shows like any cause you you do a lot of things right yeah well we we're creating as we go okay. um, I have like eight shows so the eight shows that come out are dating it's inside the network it's um it's the, a, a big transgender show the okay. girls club we we also have the gay. It's agency, called the what? The Girls Club. Oh, wow. Right. And then there's another. Do they want to be called that? Have you have you yeah. ran that by them? Absolutely. Okay. I mean, I run it by everybody. And I, and one thing that I don't do is my mission isn't to make the reality star look bad. Yeah. Because I'm in the same position. And what what I'm here to do is to ignite the numbers, so our points could be on the board like basketball players. Mm -hmm. So what's the Girls Club? Break that down. Yeah. It's uh, 13 transgenders. Transgender women They're super cool They're super lit And they're in there To tell their story And to survive You know This big moment And you know Make a name for themselves And it's It's one of the loudest shows We have Sydney Starr Is the star of it She helped uh, Put that together with me And it started off With her trying to do An audition show A love show In Atlanta And do Attempted murder Like 17 shots Like popped off And it's like oh, What? Yeah, it was crazy. It's in, it's in, it's in there. It's all. Y'all got that on camera? Yeah. Shout out to the Rod from the Gay Agency. Shout out to the Gay Agency as well. What the hell the is the Gay Agency? A Gay the Agency. Gay yeah. Oh. Yeah. So listen, with this show, is there like, a, like, it's like a survival show, or is it like a theme? Like, what is it? It's, it's similar to we did Bad Girls Club mm -hmm. with with Oxygen. We did Bad Girls All Star Battle, but it was it's the similar to the Bad Girls that Club was All Star Battle. You know, yeah. Bad Girls. Club. So that that yeah. proves to you that Natalie and I worked together a long time ago. So I was able to hit her, tell her love and hip hop. Hollywood wasn't really coming back. I think you should work with Zeus. It's a good play for you. You'll have power, control, EP credit, all of that, and boom. You know what I mean? And that's so now you're about to steal all these, uh, all Lee's thunder. You're about to take <laughs> all of those people you would have said, hey, go over there to Lee. You're taking for yourself now. Exactly. Yes. You, yeah. call, him, yes. Exactly. you call him Lee? Oh, Lemmy. Lemmy. Damn. Lemmy. Lemmy. I, I can't remember his name. Lemmy. Lemmy. I'm not yeah, bad. because my other co-founder from Raycon is Ray Lee, so I was like, huh? Yeah, he you. knows I'm right. Got you. Got mm. you. All right, we got more with Ray J. When we come back, don't move. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. Mm. We are the Breakfast Club. We're still kicking it with Ray J, DJ, NV, Jess, Larry, Charlemagne, the God. Ray J is still here with us. So now recently, on some on some other news, I was looking at TMZ. They, they robbed your cars? They stole your cars? Two Maybachs missing. Like what? Out of nowhere? From where? Right on our moment. They it's in they're in Reno right now. The cars, the cars, yeah. They found and them. and uh, we was we landed sometime in the middle of the night somewhere. Mm -hmm. But the, the cars were supposed to pull up, pick us up. You know, we had we had the suits and we was gonna go corporate. And then it just kind of like you know what I'm saying somebody transported them and then they stopped answering the phone. And we tracked the cars and it was in Reno at like this casino and chop shop. They were yours. Mm. They were mine. Oh, so I bought man. one and uh, Truth, who is my business partner, he's the one that. Helped me close the deal with Raycon. Um, he bought him one, and we were just like, you know what I'm saying? Just feeling good to come to New York. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. How much Not the Raycon check was, man? <laughs> 
you know, it it was it was in another like world because I feel like we did so much. Like it was so hard um, to just break the code and understand, you know, technology and hardware. You know, the three PO services you need or the warehouses, customer service. The CMO has to be right. The CFO has to be right. Right. So even with this new company, like I know so much from strategic marketing and what we've done there to conversion marketing to and, and all these other like shortcuts that we have so it's only right to mm -hmm. implement that into the, the reality shows because i never lost in reality mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and i would say that i'm the um i'm the reality show king i do that i was gonna base it like you know tiger woods of it but um but uh, I didn't Think Tiger No that. Tiger wasn't that, that's Tiger just, wasn't the just first Just says no Just right. is the reality no. show connoisseur Just says no <laughs> Wait wait what, what are you talking about then, There's oh. nobody There's nobody bigger than me Mmm I'm uh, Well At first At first I ain't gonna lie At first It was Stevie J for a long time He had oh, it He had it, In that era In that era In that, in that era. era It was Stevie J Ray's after that era though Yeah I, No no Ray no, is, no, Ray is no, at, no 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 Ray is there This is after Ray This is this era, this, this, this is after. after love and hip hop is after for the love of Ray J and wow, Brandy yeah, and Ray J and family business. Yeah. Damn. 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 See, Ray, right, Ray, Ray, you got a two joint right. on. We've had this Boy, conversation right. before. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So in reality, mm -hmm. I, that's where I dominate. So why wouldn't I? I never thought about but that. But he also, Ray J reality. But I, I feel like also in front of the camera, but. You got a lot to do with behind the camera too. That, exactly. So I would call you the king of behind the camera too because no, he produces. Oh yeah. He, you know, it's all types of stuff. I'm trying to let you know. I'm giving you your props in another way. Would you put your family back on reality show because people scrutinize your relationship and no matter what you do, they all the eyes are always there. Yeah, yeah. that's that. But that's the and I and I mentioned that. That's all, what you sacrifice, really. Yeah, I mentioned that even through the first episode of Inside the Network. I break down how reality stars get the end of the stick. And it, I mean, it's, it's hard to the even, short end of the stick. Yeah, I mean, your church is even tripping. Like it's like, yeah. you, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Because the ratchet scene is about to do a takeover, mm -hmm. and it's going to be unstoppable yeah. for like a few years, where it's going to be on everybody's nerves. When did it go away though? Like no. reality, reality's been ratchet since it's been, it's been on. Nah, but not yeah, this. But you ratchet. never seen nothing. That's like, true. You never yeah. seen nothing like the Tronics Network. Yeah. You've never seen nothing like the Tronics Network. At the end, you're going to subscribe. I don't know if that's what we need right now, though, Ray. But what? But what am I talking about? If we do, we need that level of ratchet. Yeah, because watch the story arc with it. Like, okay, yeah, this is ratchet like, with a message. Yeah, it, like, does it have a message? Absolutely, ratchet mm. has a lot of messages because when you watch yourself in a ratchet in, environment and you do either ratchet things or you do the right thing, that's how you know how to make adjustments with yourself. And, okay. But what I don't want to see, and I'm pretty sure nobody is, everybody is tired of seeing people just fighting all over the place all right. the time so that's what he's saying about like a storyline it's actually gonna be storyline yeah, like like inside stuff. the network is like my creative directors was fighting because they were tripping off something I just caught it on tape or the agency what? the agency I mean <laughs> got cameras set up back no nah, hey, nah, like, when they so was fighting I just grabbed the table for nah, I was just grabbed the phone but after that yeah I started to have like I got four or five shooters just ready for anything that happens now and I'm like the ratchet I told people I am the ratchet Shakespeare Oh, I like. Oh, I like that. You no, know, it is. I don't. And, and, and what? <laughs> I don't okay. like that at all. That sounds ridiculous, Frazier. Okay. Ratchet Shakespeare. Oh, ratchet Shakespeare. I, well, li I like it. Well, break well, that down. What is the Ratchet Shakespeare? Maybe I need to see it first. Maybe I'm judging. You know what I mean? But uh, do you guys have time today to watch the Sizzle? Absolutely. How long yeah, is the Sizzle? How long is the Sizzle? Like a, like two minutes. Of course. Oh, we got absolutely. Two minutes. We got you know? time. Are you uh, really pushing for Brandy so and Monica to go on tour together? That's all I want. I mean, like, like what, what made you wake up one day and say, I want, "This is what I need." Well, I've been saying it since the since they did the uh, verses. Yeah, like mm -hmm. I got the jet for B. We got we flew out there. It was this vibe. They were going back and forth. It wasn't like a competition, but it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And Brandy, like her side, we was. Go I was. Go it was like a mosh pit for in a ballot. It was like a it was a ballot plan, and you look to the side, and we giving her all that support. And I just think Brandy and Monica is an undeniable tour, mm -hmm. right? It, like, it's like you all, you both win. Last run, no matter what you feel or whatever, like how can you not mm -hmm. take that opportunity? Yeah, I love why, that. If you know it's there, why do anything else first? And yeah, the last yeah, song yeah. of the tour, Boys Mind, close mm, it out. God bless the night. Crazy. So I told him, like, I think that's a that's a hundred million dollar. Both of them, I think they can bring in a who, who, who opens up that show though? Huh? Who opens that show? I mean, of course, Monica would have to open it, right? Yeah, have to open it. See, yeah, I would think so. 
I mean, because they would be co headlining. Something different. Maybe you could do like a song, 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 <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. Brandy, like Brandy, Brandy ain't Brandy ain't having that either. She, she yeah, don't. but the Brandy Monica tour or the Monica Brandy tour, whichever one. My, I'm, my, my title is Brandy Monica tour. Yeah, yeah. Well, she she would have to open. You right? know what I mean? I mean and tell them, tell them why. Cold headlining. But tell them why. And they can't do song for song for song because that'll be a replica of the verses again. But or no, it'll break up there. Yeah, 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 mm-hmm. yeah. She will open. She gets the crowd pump. Like this is great. And then Brandy, boom. Like who, who did you think won the verses? I think Brandy. I'm mean, Brandy. I'm yeah, Brandy all yeah. day. I don't even Not remember. just because you here, yeah. you know. It's just no, no, Brandy. no, no. Brandy is Listen. one of my yeah, that's fact. top three singers. R and B. I told you since I was little. Did not who, who did I um this women's in the international month, uh-huh. women's history month. The first lady oh, Brandy, yeah. that was the first Brandy was the first woman that I honored. No, it was your mom. Then Brandy. Yeah, it was my mom. Then Brandy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. But Brandy, you yeah. know what I'm saying? She was on the second day. I grew up on this woman, so I'm like, all right, cool. And I also grew up on Mon- Monica too. And when you think of Brandy, you think of Monica, and it's all right. But yeah, but Monica will open, Brandy will end it. Absolutely, Boom. make that money. We, we've debated go. who got the best catalog. It's mm. not about the best catalog. It's just the best, uh, the, the overall accolades, right? It, 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 it you know. You not, not with music, because then you go back to like the the no, whole no. tank. Tyrese and Genuine, right? Tyrese is the bigger out of the three, but Genuine got the biggest records. Bro, that, Tyrese you be ta- is the biggest out of all three of them. <laughs> yeah, as far oh. as movie, Tyrese. Oh, as far as movie, Tyrese is, is not yeah. the biggest out of. Them. I'm talking about like singers. Tank Genuine. No, I think Genuine. Ty- I think Tyrese out of a is, person. I, I, pop well, no, Tyrese the is the most irritating. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Right. Okay. He's, he's definitely. Mm. So he definitely is the like yeah, the, you're not wrong and the most right. entertaining. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. He's the most, the most, no. 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 He's not the most entertaining. I like irritating. I mean, he's I the most irritating. <laughs> he irritates oh, yeah. the shit out of me. Yeah. Okay. Everything he's been doing lately has just been well, cringy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Y'all know each other. Y'all know each other. Of course, y'all know each other. Yeah. Yeah. Him and my sister are cool friends. They always been cool. Mm. You yeah. never like them. I don't, I don't. I don't. You know what I'm saying? I don't care about Tyrese. Mm. Okay. But I don't like some of the stuff he be doing. And saying, you know what I'm saying, but and crying about a bunch of stuff. Well, I'm not gonna diss Tyrese. Yes, you already did. Oh yeah, that, that's he, gone. Going on, he, you've done that. enough for him to go on Instagram. But remember last last time he was playing around with Eddie Murphy. Remember last time I got mad at Tyrese. I remember. I remember. Yeah, I remember. Don't yeah. play with me. Yeah. Don't play with me, Tyrese. I don't. I don't. We don't. It's from, I'm not like that. But still, yeah, man. Mm. Don't play with me. Yeah. Why you turn to Ray Park all of a sudden? Like what the hell? Like why? <laughs> what did, 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 what did you go over there and drink? Yeah. What did yeah. Tyrese just start getting shots for? <laughs> no, I was why? Just, no, because oh, we no, asked no, about yeah, because him. y'all was talking. We was talking about him. He so if you look at his interview. He just did, and somebody missed. He said, "Oh no, me and Ray J." He said something real smart, so I'm just yeah. responding. Oh, I'm just responding. Oh. So with him. Mm-mm. But my sister does, so it's cool. Yeah, that's one of her friends, you know. So yeah, so it's like whatever. But stay away from me. Smart, whatever. All right, we got more with Ray J when we come back. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV, Jess Hilarious, Charlamagne Tha God. We are The Breakfast Club. And yep, Ray J. That's right. Ray J is still here. Jess? Okay, so what's going on? What you want, princess? It's hot in here, huh? Yeah, it no, is. Take your coat off. You take your coat off. You probably... It's kind of hot, yeah. A little bit. It's all right. What's, what's okay. really going on with that? I mean, for the fourth time, I mean, it's been a conversation for a while. Yeah. Okay, we just he's taking his armor all right now. Oh, he put his earring back. There. We trying to figure it out. We seen things unfold on we TV. We seen, yeah, yeah, you know, this from the beginning. Like y'all been through a lot together. Y'all got kids. A lot. Two beautiful babies. Mm-hmm. Yo, I want to do one more day with you guys here. I know you guys are busy, but mm-hmm. I'm having fun. My son is here. Oh, oh my god! I brought him with me, and it's just like it completed a lot of stuff for me. Cause I was like, he a boy. My my daughter loved going to school. Mm-hmm. And and she's in her zone, you know what I'm saying? She five, about to be six, but he four. And he like, he like be wanting to be with me. And when I'm out of town and I'm not there, that's when I get emotional. Because it's like, mm. you know what I'm saying? Just the little things of what they trying to learn mm. and who they watch is who they are like. You know what I'm saying? So he hasn't wanted to leave me. You know how you like, all right, I want to go back. Yeah. He's like, I want to be with, with you forever and ever and ever yeah. and ever. You know what I'm saying? And then if I even go like to the store, he'll just start crying. So I'm like, you can come with me everywhere. Mm-hmm. Because it's not like you can't. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like parents and everybody or creators be like, I need this time to die. That's that's a front, bro. Mm-hmm. It's, a, it's, it's just <laughs> making yourself more busy than you should be for the kids. So. He here with me. He got on the plane with me. He hopped on the plane. He got on the couch. He went to sleep. He woke up in New York. 
Mm. You know, just having a good time. But why is Princess asking for a divorce for the fourth time, Richard? Yeah. Um, I just think that sometimes you, you reach a peak and... You said this before. Yeah, and I'm saying everyone is that next peak. Because sometimes when you break up, that one is where you're just like depressed about it and you like can't think about nothing else. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And then the next one, it gets easier and then it starts to make sense. You know what I'm saying? Because I guess happiness is important you know what i'm saying but for me if it, if my kids are happy mm. then i don't care about happiness and a lot of people put they say you have to be happy to for your kids yeah for sure and i feel much more like i feel like i, I have the power in my hands now mm. but at the same time i would the fact that we made the vow and i'm 100 mm -hmm. i would i could just i could not be happy and be happy for the kids and just ride it out and figure out which years we're gonna have that's gonna be great and which aren't you know what i'm saying yeah. so i'm willing to not be happy to be around my kids every day like no, if, that's not good because no. the kids are, the kids are all you're right no 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 I, t I get that but it's like if you say you're gonna die for your kids mm -hmm. like you're gonna die for your kids but but you won't sacrifice your happiness for them no that's, no just no, no. Like, do you want to get a divorce right i'm just i'm really happy i'm happy that i'm just able to like create something like like in a, in a sense of like give me this building and do all of this right now mm -hmm. and let me see it I, it's it's crazy it's, do y'all speak do you have a good relationship yeah we talk every day we super cool like it's you all good get a divorce right? yeah i don't i just I, I don't know what that means you know what i'm saying like if we're not together then you know I just want to I just want to protect her as far as like yeah. whatever the industry has or whatever it's doing like she's killing them in poker right now yes there's yeah, a lot of, yeah, of, yeah, lot of millions on the table you playing with millions of dollars you know what I'm saying so you just got to protect her and protect the kids like you cannot you, you're the, the kid my kids love their mom they look at that they're that's their everything so how can you not make sure that that right. figure yeah. is even if you say all this crazy shit and just call me out my name or call say I'm gonna die early whatever mm. it's still all love is mm. it true that you trying to get a pardon for um, Suge Knight from Donald Trump or you were trying to get one when he was in office mm. I mean yeah. I heard that was one of the reasons you was around him when he was in office because you were trying to get a pardon for Suge Knight no 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 and that's a, what you said when you said it I'm like that is a like a good idea when well he it won. can't happen now because he's not president well I was just about to see I was, I was just about to say when he wins again that's what I was just gonna so you going for Trump I don't who we vote for shouldn't be a, the topic of conversation what can we do to help this place mm. like are, are, you know what I'm saying like what are, what does it look like right now? Mm -hmm. are we all is it all messed up it's all messed up to me mm -hmm. and interest rates are, was chilling with with, with with DT bro we talking 1% 3% 2% 2% for all people everybody ate like yeah. we, you know what I'm saying for more damn I don't know I mean I, I guarantee you this you can't get canceled if you say you're gonna vote Donald Trump like you, you used to mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying like if you said mm -hmm. that you you risking something right yeah. now it's like I'm voting for him too um, but 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 listen if you if you have your mamas and your grandma if you, if you have that. your grandmas and your mamas putting your ballot in for you cause they like well we worked hard for this so I'm gonna put yours in mm -hmm. and you tell them to, to go Trump just know that they still gonna go Biden so if you wanna yeah. vote you gotta get out there and do it yourself mm -hmm. I want to do whatever you wanna do that's what you said to Puff? And, and he just oh said that. my God. Ray, 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 how that? Ray, Ray, you can get the cameras going right now and wrestle short of me. That'd be a good one. Ray, I'm just asking. Has those words ever been Don't want to play with you, Ray. That's the second oh, time we got to play with you, Ray. Oh my God. <laughs> That's the second time, Ray. Because you got, you got the goons. You, you know you got those goons. <laughs> No. You got a booty goon show? No. But I do got the agency now. I do got, you know what I'm saying? Okay. My transgender squad. Um, and and, and, and then, oh, squad. Suki and I, yeah. we have Hangover 69. Crazy. The first song is called Pipe You Down. The video's done. Okay. I want to break it here. I want to. I want to be. I want to be on. Okay. I want it to be on heavy rotation here first. Yeah. Before I mean, anywhere else. You know what I'm saying? This yeah, is where right I see. There. This is where I see heavy row for this because it's like it has this like drill, this drill beat. But it, I but liked it. That was what was in the trailer, though, right? Yeah. Yeah. I it's a it. good tune. I it's like a really it. good tune, and I think that here, I mean, here is where I know it should be first. Yeah. Like, but not just playing it. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, no. Oh, yeah. But the, but the world gotta love it, and I want you guys to love it. And if you don't, I'm your friend. 
Ray's been in that one. That's my guy. Uh, I've had my quota of Ray J for the day. It's time for you to stand on business, Ray. And what I mean by that is, like, you need to do more interviews where you're talking about your business acumen and your business portfolio. Yeah, it's time now. But I, you it know, is. I couldn't do that there because it was so sealed tight. Mm -hmm. And I had to, like, you know, just watch a couple of things. But I'm in full control. I spent all my money. I spent all my money well, on How can people network. subscribe? You didn't even tell them how they can subscribe. Yeah, Tronics. Tronics, T R O N I X Network. Dot com. You should give people 30 mm, days free where they can see if they can enjoy it first and then you'll get them clicked. Mm, he was already talking about now, you know, people you know giving how you, it you, how you do? You got to put your credit card info but anyway. I get 30 I don't think days. So. Yeah, don't do that. Like, see, you so. got to understand, DJ Envy, this is the loudest, most premium content they're ever going to get mm -hmm. with an art that you can't beat that just mm, makes you feel good for four ninety nine. That I was, you've I'm never seen. I'm happy for you, Ray J. Ray J, ladies um, and gentlemen. Yes. I can't wait to see what the Tronic Network does. Yeah, yeah. So we are. We are, we are working. Are it's different. live now. Yes, mm -hmm. you can go in and, and you can subscribe, pre-subscribe now. The trailer is coming. Suki has a show coming out on the Tronics Network where she's executive producing What's it. it called? Oh. Here's the title. Little Coochies of Las Vegas. You, <laughs> Little Coochies of Las Vegas. Is. There's nothing real about Ray J. He's I a spoof. I, I promise he is a walking you, spoof. it's about all okay. of the sexy little dancers. Oh, the right? little people. Yeah. Oh, oh shoot. Little Coochies. Oh, but then Splits, right? Splits, who's the first fighter on the Fight Club. Episode. I let her produce a show called Big Hoochies of Atlanta. And that's mm, the big, so the that's big, big backs. Big ones. Ooh. So we ooh, got the, ooh, the, the ooh. Big Backs of ATL. Is crazy. Okay. <laughs> Ray J got a show called Big Backs of ATL. Yo, that's crazy. That's <laughs> what's up. And the Gay Agency's like series is like Brokeback Mountain, but the reality version. Oh, I love it. Oh my God, We're ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> yes, Ray J. Yes, yo. Tronics Network. We appreciate uh, you, brother. Man, make sure you didn't pass out yo, over there. Ray is he the is illest man. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning, y'all. Good morning, everybody. DJ NV Jess Larry Charlamagne the guy how we read how we lot of Ray J we told Ray J we were gonna play his song with Sukiyana we don't have it um, maybe it's for the best but yes did he send it I don't know if he sent it or not did he send it he was here he, but I don't know did he send it Ray J sent his song Ray J alright well look no, come on cause it. I gotta get to alright where we going UK he or Thailand about, we going to UK Thailand is in the third hour all right, so an investigation was opened at the hospital where Princess Kate had her surgery. Y'all pay attention. Mm -hmm, People mm -hmm, in the mm -hmm. UK been on their Sherlock Holmes vibe, right? Since I put them on to the funny business that's been going on with Kate. Um, with all the fake pictures and unconfirmed sightings of Princess Kate, um, we've all been worried about the, the condition she's in and if she's actually okay. But y'all taking it too far now. I never told y'all to go dig up that lady's medical records, all right? Records show that at least one employee at the London Clinic tried to illegally access Princess Kate's medical records. That's not one of my, my sources. I like to be very clear on that. Um, the clinic reached out to the palace and let them know there was a breach of security and that there will be a full-on investigation. They're going to launch it. All right. The rep of the Kensington place said that they don't have nothing to do with it and it's a matter for the clinic to handle. Now, what if they're investigating and come back to Baltimore? Hmm. I'm not there. All of this, <laughs> all of this happened the day hmm. after the video of Kate being happy and healthy in public came out. Now, I want y'all to be like paying attention to me when I say this. Happy and healthy mm -hmm. because... That was not Kate. I, I'm just going to say it. I'm still trying to find out who exactly it is. It's like two <laughs> names swarming around that was in a personator. So to your point, yeah, they do have impersonators. Yeah, that lady is um, taller than Kate and a little bit on the thinner side. Very, very skinny. That's not her. If you zoom into the picture, you can clearly see, no, that is not Kate. Um, the hospital employee, one of the hospitals at the employee that tried to get those records was probably looking for some answers because that lady in the video was not giving Kate. Right, mm -hmm. we don't like I said we don't know who she is yet, but we we're we're searching right now. I got um a couple phone calls at nine a.m. So <laughs> I'll continue to keep it. I believe in you. Okay, thank I you. I believe you. And what is this music? Oh, like, I thought you requested like this. No, y'all are really it's playing with me. It's like <laughs> I thought it's not you UK requested music. this. Mm -mm. No, like, the queen is here. So what you rather hear Central C? Y'all are so funny. No, and don't cut on Remy Ma. None of that stuff either. Sometimes it <laughs> should just be quiet. <laughs> Y'all so funny. I thought you asked for this. No, I ain't asked You know I did. For didn't. your UK news. No, that is y'all playing games in Worldwide mess. All right, listen. And more worldwide news. Back over to the US. Kanye says Ice Spice is refusing to give him a verse. But where is that? 
refusing. Okay. Don't play with her. I'm not. Thank you. I just want to be clear. So before we get into it, backstory, Kanye has an unreleased song called New Body. Mm -hmm. All right, it was supposed to come out on an album that he planned to release back in 2018, right. like six years ago, Kanye. But the album never came out. Nicki Minaj was originally on the feature um, on a song, and this was her verse. This is a vibe. I liked it. Um, last year, when Kanye was getting ready to release his Vultures album with Ty Dolla Sign, he asked Nicki to clear. Uh, he asked her for the clearance for her verse. Nicki told Kanye no. After Nicki deaded Kanye, <laughs> that is so dramatic. After Nicki deaded Kanye. <laughs> He apparently reached out to Ice Spice and Doja Cat to replace Nicki's uh, verse. Kanye vented on his IG story about the status of Ice Spice verse. And it says, Ice Spice sent the verse in. So she did actually record it and she sent it in for new body. Now her team is saying, we can't use it. Makes mm. sense. It's probably for the best. Well, see what Nicki said, it was six years old and it was an old verse. Like she yeah. didn't want to put out an old mm. verse, which I makes totally sense. I totally agree with it. And Ice Spice... Uh, I open up for Taylor Swift. Yeah, I was going to say best friends with Taylor um, Swift now. Homies with Taylor Swift. Mm -hmm. Taylor Swift don't F with you. Yeah, I mean, that's She's riding that's with obvious. Taylor Swift. Right, she's yeah. riding with her. So I just want mm -hmm. to give y'all, you know, just a little bit and, of news and everybody, and everywhere. And everybody musically don't have to collaborate. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. Kanye West, Ice Spice collaboration. I'm not fiending for that in no way, shape, Might have yeah. sound dope, though. Might have sound hard. Probably it for the best it didn't happen. Yeah. Undocumented immigrants wait a minute undocumented immigrants have the right to own guns very very scary earlier this month an in Illinois judge dropped gun charges against an illegal migrant uh, US District Court Judge Sharon Coleman she argued that a migrant I don't, I don't know how to say his name but he's clear, clearly you know a migrant and um, he acted in self defense <laughs> a judge in Illinois just ruled illegal immigrants have the right to keep and bear arms. Police arrested an illegal immigrant living in Chicago with a gun back in 2020. They charged him for violating the federal law banning mm -hmm. illegal immigrants from having guns. Judge Sharon Johnson Coleman just decided the Second Amendment applies to him, the illegal How? immigrant, like everybody else, so he can have a gun. In her decision, she wrote that Humberto Flores received and used the handgun solely for self-protection and protection of property during a time of documented civil unrest. Court documents show Flores fired the gun at moving cars during the BLM riots in Chicago. He argues police officers warned him about looters who were approaching his neighborhood. I'm so confused by this. Mm -hmm. An illegal immigrant, right? So that mm -hmm. means you're not a citizen of America. So if you're not a citizen of America, how do the constitutional the rights to you? or even yep. laws of that state apply to you? Yep. And he said, basically, like he fired. He said he said that he was defending himself, trying to protect himself. This was during a BLM uh, yeah. movement. Yeah. And so he, is he is he in the? I wonder if he's in the process of getting his citizenship. Uh, they did it not. Doesn't, it doesn't matter. He's not, not a citizen. He's not a citizen. No, yet. he's not. Yeah, I told y'all already. <clears throat> America, you know, doesn't even have the resources to take care of these people that are coming into this country legally or illegally. And so, what happens when people can't take care of themselves? Uh, you know, in a lot of cases, they resort to crime. Mm -hmm. And where are they going to be committing these crimes? Wherever they can, but especially in the hood. So, I'm telling you, all mm -hmm. spring, all summer long, that's what you're going to hear about immigrants, illegal or otherwise, clashing with folks in the hood. And now they have the right to bear arms. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. <sighs> Good luck. All right. And that is just with the worldwide mess for the second hour. The third hour, we got some Thailand news coming up, y'all. Some Thailand. You news. don't know nobody. You know. You know what though? You might. Excuse me. Yeah. Thank you so very much. All right. I don't know why you think I only know people in Baltimore. And, and, I didn't and New York. say that. Be playing. I did not say that. I like know, you ain't worldwide. No, she got mm -hmm. mad connected in the UK. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Now, when we <laughs> come back, Charlemagne, who you give me a donkey too? <laughs> Four after the hour, we need two white Mississippi law enforcement officers to come to the front of the congregation. Uh, they have a team called the Goon Squad, and they're going to jail for a long time, and I'm going to tell you why. All right, we'll get into that next. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. Hey, wake up. Wake up. You're locked into The Breakfast Club. This is America. Uh -huh. There is no question that there are problems in this country between police and community. Yes, you are a donkey. The latest on that police killing of a black man. Now to new developments in the deadly spa shooting rampage. Uh, and yesterday was a really bad day for him, and this is what he did. And so we are in a state of emergency. Okay, white supremacist violence is and always has been the number one threat to our society. But I'm also very proud that my wife is white. The white, white, white. Hey, hey. Breakfast Club, bitches. All right, Charlene, please tell me, why <clears throat> was I your donkey of the day? 
Well, let's discuss. Uh, donkey of the day for Wednesday, March 20th goes to two white former Mississippi law enforcement officers who were members of a self-styled goon squad. Yes, their names are Hunter Elward, who was a 31-year-old former Mississippi sheriff's deputy, and Jeffrey Middleton, a 46-year-old former sheriff's deputy who federal prosecutors described as the ringleader of the goon squad. Now, I know some of y'all believe I'm a race baiter. And you're saying to yourself now, why did you have to say the officers were white? Well, race plays a very important factor because these officers ran up in these people's house without a warrant, all because a neighbor reported that several black men were staying at a white woman's home and reported seeing suspicious behavior. I put suspicious in air quotes. Keep in mind, this is Mississippi. A state that didn't officially abolish slavery until February 7th, 2013. Okay? Simply because someone forgot to do the paperwork. True story. The state of Mississippi had never submitted the required documentation to ratify the 13th Amendment, so slavery didn't officially get abolished until February 7th, 2013. So when a state like that, okay, the suspicious, all right, suspicious behavior is simply all these black men living with a white woman. All right, that damn neighbor probably was thinking to himself, I got porn hub. I know black gangbang hardcore when I see it. So he decided to be the fun police and call the police. And this is what happened. Let's go to WAPT 16 ABC for the report, please. This has been a historic day and historic sentencing. Hunter Elward, the man who shot Michael Jenkins in the mouth, got 20 years in prison. The first member of the Rankin County Goon Squad to be sentenced, Elward apologizing for the actions of he and others for abusing and sexually torturing Eddie Parker and Michael Jenkins in what started as a suspicious person investigation, but later led to a cover-up. Hunter Elward stood in court and apologized to both men. Parker stood up in court and forgave him. For, you know, what, you know, is giving him what is done, I forgive that part, but other than that, oh, still, he still did, you know what I'm saying, what he did, and he, got, he has to be punished for that. Yes. Elward put his weapon in Jenkins' mouth, pulled the trigger, but it didn't go off the first time. He did it a second time, severing Jenkins' tongue as the bullet exited his throat. Jeffrey Middleton mm -hmm. was sentenced to 17 and a half years in prison, the reported architect of the Rankin County Goon Squad. In the assault in January of last year, six officers tortured the victims, tested their tasers to see which one was the strongest, and tried to cover all the evidence after. Prosecutors say Middleton said he had no problems killing anybody. God bless that brother. He better than me. I would have had to talk to my therapist, my wife, all my spiritual uh, mm. leaders to get to that level of forgiveness. They tortured sexually tortured this black man last year in a brutal attack that was based on race. Six cops came into this man's home with no warrant and assaulted these brothers with stun guns, a sex toy, and other objects. Let me tell you something, man. I was born in 1978. Okay, therefore, I grew up on Wu-Tang torture tactics and I always said that Wu-Tang torture tactics were extreme. Okay, I never thought in a civilized society Wu-Tang torture tactics would ever be necessary. But after hearing this story, I disagree with myself. Mm. Okay, sometimes you got to get medieval on these fools, all right? These are some of the things that need to happen to these officers in prison. If you're new to Wu-Tang torture tactics, listen. Jesus, I mean, yeah, you can sell anything close. I wonder. Mm. Hmm. Listen, y'all know I'm a mental health advocate. I love therapy. I love meditation. I love plant-based medicine. We all on a healing journey. You know this about me, but I also believe in energy. And what you put out, you will get back. It's a really simple concept. If you live your life with the mindset, don't do anything to anyone that you wouldn't want done to you or someone you love, then you will live a great life. So with that said, I want these cops to receive the exact same energy in prison that they administered on the street. See, if you ask me, this isn't the first time these officers have done this. This is just the first time they got caught and punished for it. I have no problem with eye for an eye. Dildo for a dildo in this situation, okay? Do you know what eye for an eye means? The principle of justice that requires punishment equal in kind to the offense, not greater than the offense, as was frequently given in ancient times. So if someone puts out another's eye, one of the offender's eyes should be put out. Now, I've heard people say eye for an eye makes the whole world blind. That is not true. The whole world will not be blind. In fact, nobody would be blind if whatever you did to someone got back done to you. I really believe that. People would, would, would move a little different, a lot different. See, what those members of the Goon Squad don't understand is that it's all fun and games until the inmates got the dildo. Okay? And listen, I see the comments on social media sometime and folks say, Charlamagne, you make everything about race. And it's usually white people saying that. And I don't even get upset. I understand simply because race doesn't really exist for you because it has never been a barrier. Black folks don't have that choice. That's a quote from a Nigerian writer's name who I cannot pronounce. Let me put your name. Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie. Say it, play it one more time. Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie. I, I, even when I hear it, I can't, you know. Mm -hmm. not, There's no S's in it. What do I mean? 
<laughs> I don't want to Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie It still feel like I be spitting all over the place mm. Blessings to that queen Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie Yes Blessings to that queen Drop on the clue bomb for her Just remember Whenever you tell a black person They making everything about race Just remember that quote From Chi Chi Okay Race doesn't really exist for you Because it has never been a barrier Black folks don't have that choice Please let Kathy Griffin give Hunter Elward and Jeffrey Middleton the biggest hee-haw. Please give this giant jar of mail the biggest hee-haw. Mm. What's the, what let, state was this again? I'm sorry. Mississippi. Mm. Let Chelsea Handler get in on this. Hee-haw, hee-haw. That is way too much Dan Mayonnaise. Man, I feel like Chris Rock got something to say, man. Cracker ass cracker. Ooh. Oh, my girl. My girl working this morning. Cracker. Okay, okay. <laughs> you don't think they should get the death penalty, though? Yeah, like let's stop playing. Like, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. Well, and not, they do have that in Mississippi, in Mississippi, right? What they still do that? Yeah, but if you believe in an eye for an eye, nobody got killed. Sadly, uh-huh. I mean, nobody got killed. Thankfully, mm. um, he shot him in his throat. He did shoot him in his throat. Yeah, they got they got a I think twenty. He years. just happened to survive. Yeah, he just happened to survive. They, they tried to yeah. kill him. That he, he should be fried. It's crazy. And then hopefully when people see that you die from this, like it's not just yeah. you go to jail. I like the, I like the prison. I like yeah. the 20 years in prison. But he pulled the trigger, nothing came out, so he pulled it again. Like he knew what was up. I, I, I personally like the 20 years in prison, especially if they're living amongst general population. Two police oh. officers, everybody knows what they did. Everybody knows their name. It's a pretty high profile case okay. in Mississippi. You know? Just, just, I just, like booty. Just, just all. Give the inmates some dildo. I you know, see. Dildo, that, dildo that man butt and then... Nah, then he got to take a shower to clean himself off. Yeah, hey, I that. say ten years and then death penalty. I'm with you. But you don't like the yeah. twenty years of torture? Nah, twenty, 20 years. years. You gotta understand these police officers in prison mm. for doing what they did to a black man in Mississippi. Mm. You know what? They may kill themselves. That might, might be true. Mm, they may commit suicide because be nobody want to go because they feel like they they can't go through twenty years of that. Nah, most of them cowards nah, in there, they can't go through. 10 that's years what I'm saying. That. It's gonna 20 be. Years. It's gonna but be why, rough. But why even give them an option to to get yeah, out? Yeah, they still in the better. Twenty years, they get mm. off for good behavior, so they have to do what? 15, 14? Mm. They still can live. Listen, they got twenty years. You know, you know. You, sometimes we don't even see these cops get sentenced at all. I don't know what to tell you. They got twenty years. Okay. And yeah, they should have to. Never mind. All right. We ain't looking for no answers from you. Ain't no way I know what to tell y'all. Like, uh, why well, we just saying what we think? That's right. <laughs> well, I'm just saying what I think. Too. Oh, why why y'all kick? Why y'all do it? What's up? Yeah, I'm talking about, I don't know what to tell y'all. So yeah, like why? I say, I say what what's I say. Like? Maybe just tell us what. So like he 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 everything yeah. in the real world. Yeah. I don't know what to tell no, y'all. Mess with their booties for twenty years. Okay. <laughs> mess with their booties. Not <laughs> <laughs> if they like that. I like booty. See? <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, mess. well, envy. You sound like you want to be in there with them no, or something. I'm good. Okay. Mm-hmm. You, you, had a, you got a lot of ideas you wrote, you, you wrote down over there. For nah, I just said just kill him. I didn't say... No, right. no. Nah, you started to say some other things, yeah. but you stopped yourself. All right. <laughs> when we come back... They're from, saying wrap it up. Not in prison. <laughs> <laughs> from MSNBC, we have Charles Coleman and uh, Tremaine Lee joining us. We're going to kick it with them when we come back. Yes. So don't move. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Everybody, it's DJ NV, Jess Hilarious, Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. We got some special guests with us this morning. We got the brother Charles Coleman and Tremaine Lee. Welcome. Peace, peace. How y'all feel? Morning, morning, morning. Right, right, thanks, I, I loved what y'all was doing. Uh, I love the black men in America to road to 2024. Uh, Why was that important to do? You know, it's, it's always important for us to, in, in our position, to center black men, right? We, we understand that we are absent in so many spaces, right? financial spaces, mm-hmm. various institutions in certain neighborhoods. Mm-hmm. But for us to be able to elevate our voices and center black men, because sometimes as we know brothers feel like they're not getting attention at home, they're not getting attention from candidates, mm-hmm. they're not getting the attention that they deserve. So Charles and I came together and said, we have this this platform, so why not elevate these brothers' voices? And I also think that when you're talking about our discourse now politically, we have a very lazy way of looking at it. And when I say we, I'm talking about our community. And one of the reasons why is because we like to say, go vote. Mm -hmm. But that's kind of sort of with the pretext that you're voting in the way that I feel aligns with my interests. If you're not, I'm not necessarily keen on that. And what we wanted to do was present a variety of perspectives in a way that was balanced, that was fair, that allowed people to see, all right, I may not agree with that ideologically, but I understand this part of the conversation. Why does it feel like, you know, they, they, they already setting it up to if Donald Trump gets back in the White House, it's going to be black men's fault. Because you need a bad guy. 
Mm. Right, like you need a bad guy, you Mm. need a villain in this political conversation. And unfortunately, we are in America and, you know, it's easier to paint us as the bad guy rather than to look at data, right? Like if you look at the data, if Donald Trump were to win, there's no question that college educated white women and uneducated white women who are voting would have had a huge hand in that, Mm -hmm. right? Instead of looking at the demographics that point to a particular area, it's easy to say, I like this narrative. We're going to put it on black men. And so I think that that's really the answer. Like, you need a villain. To to, to compensate for the fact that, to Tremaine's point, you did not do your job. Like, it's amazing to me how, in our conversation about the elected officials that want our votes, we will put more onus on the voter who's dissatisfied Mm -hmm. rather than on the candidates who have failed to satisfy the voters. And 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 the refusal refusal to actually engage. They're going to spend the money to get out the vote. The the last minute. Souls to the polls. They're going to try to get people in church service and get them to the polls. Mm -hmm. But they're going to wait to the very last minute instead of actually engaging with the community daily, right? Be in the community. Set roots up so people know you're there. Talking to brothers all around the country, what they say is they don't ever, ever acknowledge us. I was talking to a brother the, the other day and he said, even with Donald Trump's foolishness with the sneakers and sneaker con and all that, mm-hmm. at least the devil's saying your name. You want somebody to say your name, at least he's Dang. saying it. Yeah. And he, when he said that, at least the devil's saying your name. It sounds like, you know, it sounds wild, but at least there are some overtures there. Mm-hmm. Charlamagne, where did, where did you become this lightning rod of like controversy around black men in the vote? <laughs> I have no I, idea. I, I was trying to have this conversation yeah. with somebody and I was trying to go back. I was like, ABC News, that's new. You know what I'm saying? We all know uh, if you don't vote for me, if you you ain't black, well, you know all that. But I was just like, why is it? Where did this sort of I honestly conversation think, come from? I think it's because left wing media does not do a good job of pushing the narrative they want, and they do a good mm. job of pushing right wing media narratives. For example, if I'm on something like This Week ABC and I say. Donald Trump is a threat to democracy. Donald Trump is a fascist. Donald Trump led an attempt to coup this country. And then um, I say, but Joe Biden is an uninspiring candidate who yeah. doesn't have no main kind yeah. of energy. Fox will take that part and highlight it. And instead of the left taking the first part of what, what, what I said and highlighting that, they'll just respond to what Fox said. Mm. And then it becomes this doc- easy, easy villain, though. Easy villain. Easy villain. Yeah. I think, it, but you know, sometimes I feel like it should go back to the days where you don't know who somebody's candidate is, right? You just talk about voting and getting people to get out there to vote. And you hear both sides or all three sides if you're talking independent. And nobody talks about who they're voting for. Because I I think that creates a a, a form of uh, almost like I'm shaming you because you're voting independent. Or I'm shaming you because you're voting Republic. Or I'm shaming you because you're voting Democrat. Right? Because you said, you know, we should vote for our interests. Right? But if somebody's interest doesn't, you know, fall on Jess's interests... Why should I have to go that way? And then if I say I'm voting independent, oh, you voting independent? You effing up the votes? Mm. You go? You know yeah. we can't win. And I think it really clouds things. My mom and my dad never talked, you know, to their friends about who they were voting for. They talked about everybody should go register and vote and what it meant to, to vote, but they never really talked about what candidate they were voting but for. The choices have become so stark, though. So it's not just a world where ideals like trickle down economics or policing in this country or even border issues mm-hmm. it's become clearly there are, are these white supremacist impulses embedded in our politics now mm-hmm. and so it's unfair that now we have to expose ourselves and and sometimes you have the the ideas of a democratic plantation you, and you got to stick to this side or that side mm-hmm. but the the stakes are so high that i think it's a legitimate concern of, of how folks are arriving at their vote they should have we should have full access to the franchise which we don't mm-hmm. but you should be able to have complete independence and be able to keep it to yourself but i think in this environment it's become dangerous. I think that the other side to it is it's incumbent upon us to stop going through this cycle where we either a don't st- where we stay uneducated about the entire process of civic engagement or b choose not to share what we know mm-hmm. with other people on the off years, right? Like how many times are so we going to be like, well, you got to do this because it's the lesser of two evils or you're going to go mm-hmm. hold right. those the problem that that people on the left that are terrified about another reign of Donald Trump are having is that you had four years and you didn't do anything with it to get people to understand or to get people to feel like this is what's going to be different. And now you want to sort of do a rush job and shame people to Envy's point mm-hmm. or scare people scare to the other yeah. point. The sky is the falling. Point. The sky, the sky is, fall- is falling. Again, right? every, every, every cycle is the sky is falling. And, 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 and that is not an effective strategy. And so I think that if you're going to get to a place where you're talking about people just sort of being able to you know, discuss what their interests are 
and vote along those lines, they have to become educated mm-hmm. where that's something that, that they and can I do. don't think people like to have conversations, right? Like, so you look at, uh, I'll just take Floyd Mayweather, right? So Floyd Mayweather, a couple of years ago, said he was voting for Donald Trump. And everybody, the whole black community hated him, gave him the middle finger, turned their back on him, mm-hmm. whatever, whatever. But nobody ever asked him why. Mm-hmm. Why he felt that way. We're so quick to turn our back on somebody that doesn't necessarily agree that what we have. And we just hate to have conversations. My biggest concern in this entire discussion is that as black people... We are negotiating our views around blackness based off of whether you agree with the candidate who I agree with. Right. That is deeply mm-hmm. problematic. Right. Imagine you have a disagreement with someone in your community who looks like you about someone who's respectfully not in your community. That's right. right. And because they don't align with your choice of someone who's not in our community, you are now then trying to invalidate their blackness. That's right. I'm not about That's, to argue with you, right. argue with you over no white people. That is absurd. Right. I'm not right? So I'll give, I'll give you a great and example. And the whole, the, whole, the whole conversation through the lens of the white gaze. Yeah, I'll give you a great example real quick. I have a friend. He's a plumber in Chicago. He employs all black people mm-hmm. because he believes in supporting black people and teaching black young men and women trades. He is having trouble bidding on contracts because of the influx of immigrant labor into the city of Chicago and other contractors are underbidding him because they are paying their contractors, their 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 employees a lot under less. the table, a lot mm-hmm. less. Cash, yep. So he's like, look, on this immigration issue, I actually feel like I'm more aligned with what conservatives are saying than what Democrats are saying. You can't tell me that this man is anti-black because he has right. that position. Right. So when you talk about priorities, it shapes out in very different ways for very different people. But you also can't ignore the fact that when you align yourself on a, a singular interest or a singular right. issue, that you're also in bid with a whole bunch of other people, namely white supremacists. If you're a Republican, it doesn't make you a white supremacist. But if you're a white supremacist, blatantly, you're probably a Republican. <laughs> not, 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 not to disavow the idea that there aren't white supremacists racist in the Democratic Party. And so there are white supremacists on both sides. But the, the, that, that side on the, on the right now, it's become part and parcel of the party now. And especially with Donald Trump's recent takeover of the RNC, right. expect to see more of that. All right, we got more with Charles Coleman and Tremaine Lee when we come back. Of course, they're from MSNBC, so don't move. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV, Jess Hilarious, Charlemagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. We're still kicking it with Charles Coleman and Tremaine Lee from MSNBC. Charlemagne. So what do what do Democrats do? Because, you know, the, the, the messaging of fear, I don't think is going to work in 2024. But this is the year we should actually be afraid. Because, you know, we've been hearing the same mm-hmm. rhetoric, rhetoric mm-hmm. every election cycle, mm-hmm. right? Every presidential mm-hmm. election cycle. It's a threat to democracy. This candidate, especially Republican candidates, they always demonize them. It's a threat mm-hmm. to democracy. This is the time it actually is. But you can't make people believe it because you've been saying it for years. You no, know I really don't understand that. So last night I was in this off the record conversation with some folks in the White House and I had this very same conversation about why aren't you, you know, going to the community? People don't even even when you look at the, the charts and unemployment and wealth and everything is, is on the rise from, from Donald Trump, but the people don't feel it. And they're still trying to figure out the messaging. They say, you know, we know. We're trying to figure out the messaging. You're supposed to be the Big Ten party filled with empowered black people all across this country. Mm -hmm. And you're still trying to figure out how to communicate with black men. And the the way we live so segregated in this country, right, you know where the black people are. You know what institutions they're in, what neighborhoods they're in. You know the power brokers, those, those, the working class, the middle, you know who they are. Why aren't you still going there? They're still trying to figure out how to message all this good news. But to your point earlier, but still responding in that white supremacist kind of echo chamber. Mm -hmm. It's not doing that many services. I think it's really a matter of an inability to acknowledge their failures. So part of what has to happen... Inability or refusal? Or refusal. Yeah, yeah, right. Correct. A a refusal that is couched as an inability. That's a a great point. I think that part of why the messaging is falling flat is you can't say to me... You can't talk to me about all of the things you're going to do, all the great things you're going to... That you've done as if this is this rosy picture without acknowledging, yo, we done messing up before right, we done right. we we got a lot of work that we need to do and we acknowledge that so for as long as that is treated as a cardinal sin like yo we can't really talk about that because we're going to alienate white voters the messaging in terms of black people and in large part black men is Separate. going to fall flat the political calculus that it takes to say you know what we know this is this is right but if we speak about black men too loudly Correct. we know what's going to happen there's going to be a backlash immediately not just from from the right, but also in in that center part of your own party. You, you hotep. That's, <laughs> what, that's, 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 that's what yo, happens. But you know, even with that, it's like, yo, man. When I hear that, it's like, yeah, I'm a vote, but how can I ever truly support you if you don't even want to say my name in public? I ain't no hope. 
<laughs> you know what I'm saying? I've said like, why, why is talking about black men, talking about black people, a bad electoral? Because they, but they also they, we have to we have to be honest, and again, this is beyond party. They they fear us, so they've marginalized us. And as long as we're persona non grata in any of these spaces in this discourse, we can still again be the boogeyman, the villain. But they never have to actually appeal to us because there's a general consensus that black men are to be feared. We're not to be respected, over incarcerated. We're not in in college. We're all those things. We've been isolated to the point when it's like common knowledge that we are that. We this is I get I get so much heat for this, but it's the truth. We've been as a community the side piece of the Democratic Party for so long that when we step out of that role and we start actually asking questions and pushing back, now it's a problem. Yep. And I mean that's really the dynamic that exists, unfortunately, with the left, and so. It highlights the very complex nature of what it is to be black in America and then engage political systems because you realize like, okay, these folks over here are not really for me. These folks over here, they mess with me, but they mess with me in the dark when it's convenient, when they need me, when they want something. Right. And then when you can't have that honest dialogue, you know, to Envy's point, you start thinking about a third party, you have folks turn on each other. And it's like, well, where do I go? What do I do? So it's a very, very complex space. And it highlights the old quote. In America, black people do not have permanent political friends. We only have permanent interests. Interest. Mm-hmm. And that's mm-hmm. something that we need to sort of understand before we sort of blindly align with any political party. We need to figure out what is our ideology first. Do you so, think people need to change uh, or Democrats need to change their perception of the hypothetical swing voter? Like, you know, because... They don't think about black men when they think about yeah. the swing voter. Like, we've the had, person had. that probably voted for Obama, yeah. you know, might have voted for Hillary, but then they're like, you know what? I'm going to get this Trump thing a try, you know? I'm gonna, then I'm going to go back to Biden. Like, who, you know? I think the only thing that I would say in response to that is Democrats don't have to change that. We have to change that for them. Mm-hmm. They're not going to make that decision on their own unless there's something that moves them to do so. So as long as I can count on you to show up when I ask you to show up, mm-hmm. right? Like as my side piece, right? <laughs> That's what I'm just saying. People give me something. You didn't say it three times. Right. Side piece. Yeah. Saying, like, Don't know, get in trouble, bro. I, this, that's the last I was saying. <laughs> um, as long as I can count on you to show up when I show up, that's never going to change. So that's on us mm-hmm. as the elector to say, like, I am not set in stone as a voting block that you can necessarily count on. You got to, I'm available, right? But you got to work for it. You got to do something to get me out to, to vote for your candidate. To your earlier question, Charlemagne, when you talk about democratic messaging, if foreign aid, the two words foreign aid, right? Regardless of where it's going, I don't want to get into that discussion, but if foreign aid are not bad words, then reparations should not be a bad word. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. That's really, that's the core of what we're talking about. And I don't mean... To, to make it a singularly an issue about reparations, but I'm just using that as an example for when I when I use the term <coughs> that that term side piece or like oh well you know you kind of we're gonna deprioritize your interests if you can say foreign aid to whatever countries plural that you're going to say them then why can't we have this conversation about something that's directly you know how much each one of those bombs costs millions Absolutely. that we drop in of course mm-hmm. you know you know Donald Trump is gonna say it. At some point over the next few months, mm-hmm. Donald Trump is going to say, we keep sending all of this money, you know, the, the, the Ukraine and all of these countries, we're funding NATO. That could be used for black people reparations. It's just going to be a line. And watch what it does. Remember remember, I said it. <laughs> remember I yeah. said yeah. it. Remember what y'all said earlier about people don't even want to say black people's name, right. don't even say black men's name? He's going to say He's going to say, my blacks. My blacks deserve reparations. Watch. My blacks. My blacks. My blacks. My blacks. My blacks. Watch. My blacks. Watch. Well, we appreciate you, brothers, for joining us. Uh, tell them they could catch you. The old reparations. So, so right. Uncounted Millions of Power Reparations, where our, our episode five, it's the, the most amazing reparations story you've ever heard. America actually paid reparations once before for enslavers. And a black man somehow mm-hmm. finessed his way into the system and actually got reparation for slavery. And you can also check out Black Men in America, The Road to 2024 on Peacock. It's streaming live. All mm-hmm. right. Well, thank you, brothers, for joining us. Charles Coleman, Jermaine Lee. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Good morning, everybody. It's DJ NV, Jess Hilaria, Charlemagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. Let's get to Jess with the world. News is real. News is real. Jess Hilaria, Jessica Robin Moore. Jess don't do no lies. Jess is going to bring numbers. Jess with the mess. And news is real. On The Breakfast Club. I know they know the difference. Who put a stop
Okay, story, story, story. Savannah James, new podcast, Everybody's Crazy, has begun shooting. Um, A lot of people, you know, are undecided on this because I heard a man say earlier, oh, she about to break my heart with this. She's just been like the beautiful, just most regal, up to par, classy wife who ain't in no drama. Now she mm. got a podcast. She, well, she might still be. We don't know what the podcast yeah, is about. We don't about. know what it's yeah. about. It could be about just motherhood and could be about raising children. We yeah. don't know what it's about. And it could, yeah, we don't. I'm I just saying focused the, on drama. What the man said. That's what I said. Mm. I mean, that's what I just told y'all. Probably a man that don't need a podcast himself. Who was it? He don't have one, actually. Okay, no, that's why. Thank you. He's one of the producers. Mm -hmm. um, Beyonce says, new Cowboy Carter album inspired by Backlash to our entering country genre. Says, this ain't a country album. This is the Beyonce album. This is Act 2, Cowboy Carter. And I'm proud to share it with y'all. That's amazing. So what's that mean? She didn't have a country album before everybody started being upset at her because she was doing country songs? I don't know. They just gave me this, and that's what I'm reading, y'all. This is stuff I, that, that I, I don't need to elaborate on. I think she's saying Beyonce's okay. her own genre. She don't need to... to to make it country right. or to make mm -hmm. it rock and roll or hip hop mm -hmm. or R&B she's her own genre mm -hmm. yeah woman receive woman receives vial of human blood in her shame package jeez well what if she's a vampire and now it's a little snack right yeah stuff like that it's like cause come on this girl was on TikTok I'm That's not right. going into this she was on TikTok we didn't see what happened she's blaming it on FedEx instead of blaming it on China what's she what's she <laughs> Shein is the um, it's a nice little, you know, it's oh, like oh, a fashion over, oh, gotcha, gotcha, pretty gotcha. little thing situation. LSU star Angel Reese says viral nudes photos are fake, AI generated. I'm gonna start using that one too. <laughs> All right, Jalen Green says his family and his baby mother. Oh me, oh my god. <laughs> Jalen Green said his family and his baby motivate him. That's good. That's so it's the same thing as family and his yeah, baby but, mother Yeah, but that's him. not what he said. I can't put words in his mouth like that. Because he done started cooking and everything. I got to look up his stats and see if he's really motivated. Dre and baby daddy, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. he been, he been getting busy recently. Yeah. He been going crazy. Said, yeah, they said. He got you pregnant too? Okay, damn. Yeah, you was... <laughs> <laughs> I meant on the <laughs> basketball that. court. He, he been crazy. Crazy. He been getting busy. busy. He been getting crazy, crazy lately. <laughs> basketball court. That's why I court. said I got to check his stats and say, damn, Envy, all right. Oh, my God. He with Dre. Look. Oh, Show Cinco bad was rapper he called out on Breakfast Club. All right. Um, Donald Trump threatens <laughs> to deport Prince Harry if he's reelected. First of all, what? Oh no, they knew. They knew that they shouldn't have gave me this because they know I'm very heavily into the UK. Why would you send that man back over there so he could be slain? No. Cardi B begs fans. Not killed. Yes. Slain. Okay. Yes. Cardi B begs fans to stop making her sing the new Beyonce country song. Can't nobody make you do nothing, Cardi. Just stop singing it. All right. That is, turn your live off. That <laughs> that's, is very that's true. That's it, Cardi. Jesus. Okay, so listen. Thailand News. Oh, boy. All right? Oh, God. And, go. <laughs> and it got Taylor Swift in it. So th this is this is the thing. Okay. Tha Thailand really, they, they flexed. Like, they really bossed up. Mm -hmm. So Singapore struck a deal with Taylor Swift, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, After COVID, you know that country was real messed up. It didn't only mess up U.S. It messed up a bunch of leaving those South, Around uh, the world, yeah. Southeast yep. Asian countries, right? Mm -hmm. And so what they did, they struck a deal with her saying that she can only perform in Singapore, mm. right? And no other Southeast Asian countries. Okay? So they have a summit, you know, and they did that to bring tourists that if, if she's not going to Wales, they're going to come here and we're going to get that money, right? To Correct. rebuild our economy. Yep. So they have a, um like a Southeast Asian summit mm -hmm. every year where they all the countries meet up and they talk to each other and try to figure out how they can move forward, you know, as Southeast, mm -hmm. right? Now, <laughs> the <sa> is <laughs> Yeah, okay. right? So Thailand pressed up during the summit, like, okay, so like, what's up with this Taylor Swift situation? You know, she they not performing. Up. Yeah, what's going on, right? Mm. So it, uh, Singapore tried to act like, oh no, like, we don't know what you're talking about. Like, so Thailand Prime Minister's like, well, how much you spent on that? Like, how, you know, try to get in the business. Backing them down, yep, okay. Yep, and Singapore Prime Minister was like, I can't discuss that. Like, I'm not, I'm not mm -hmm. here, we not here for that. Mm. So Thailand Prime Minister was like, oh yeah, well somebody told me over there in Singapore, mm -hmm. like I got connects over there, like I, con like, I got connects in the UK. UK. Yeah. yeah, Thailand Prime Minister was like, somebody already told me that you spent two to three million on each show for Taylor. So what you mean? Y'all got to rebuild the government and all of that. Y'all spending a lot of money to make a lot more money already. So y'all holding out. Mm. So he still ain't never, you know, say, all right, you're right or whatever. But he had the receipts right mm -hmm. there at the summit, right? So he already knew what he was going to do. Now, the prime minister of Thailand said, even though it was real shady mm -hmm. for the prime minister of Singapore to cut everybody out like that, 
He's not mad at it. He just wanted to call him out because he knew what was going on. And he said it was smart. And so now he plans to use the Singaporean deal as inspiration to help make Thailand a more attractive option for international concerts and events. Mm, so he gonna do that with other artists yes, like you can come here but you can't go over to Singapore yeah absolutely only in Thailand but you got to have that money and it gotta be people that uh, people are willing to travel for and who other than Taylor Swift is that illegal though no I mean if a country says hey man we're gonna give you a deal and you sign some type of exclusivity where you only can perform here yeah, mm-hmm. like, wrong know, with that. Like, I, I don't they do that all the time. Yeah. I'm like, an artist might say, you know what, you can perform in New York, but you can't perform in a 200 yeah. mile radius. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They do that all the time. But check this out. On another note, the Uh-oh, Taylor more? Swift, yes, absolutely. Hello? The Taylor Swift shows in Singapore were such a big deal that people were selling fake tickets. Over 960 people in Singapore lost a total of 538,000 <gasps> in 10 weeks. Oh my God. That's no. over half a million. So that's why the tickets were on scene. I saw that on Sheen. They were selling Taylor Swift tickets for a show in Singapore. You were like, do not water down my news with no crap like that. Sheen is closed. Yeah, you seen it on clothes? They were selling the tickets on Sheen? Her last show was on March 9th, and Singapore police reported that um, reports of e-commerce scams were out there. Yeah, well, that's well, it. That is just with the worldwide Y'all better stop playing with me. We ain't like, playing with you? Please. Her news is real, allegedly. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> All right. Mix is up next. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. You're checking out The Breakfast Club. Who won the world? It's Women's History Month, and we're celebrating the most influential women in history. Check out this phenomenal woman. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV, Jess Hilarious, Charlamagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. It's Women's History Month. Jess, who are we repping today? We are repping Monique. Today, I want to recognize my comedic Baltimore sister, Monique Angela Hicks. Other than being a comedian, Monique also has skills in acting. She's best known for her roles in her show, The Parkers. And the movie Precious, where she won an Oscar for the Best Supporting Actress. She also went on to do other, other movies before and after that. She was the host of her own talk show called Monique that aired on BET. So I feel like she's contributed to media in some way. And just in case y'all forgot, Monique has also given me my flowers for setting y'all straight up here. And I want to speak to my baby, Jess Hilarious. Come on. She's a beautiful asset sitting in that seat. Mm-hmm. And she's going to bring something very special to that show. And I know the community is agreeing with what I'm saying right now because what that sister did when she sat in that seat, she was able to get y'all to see something and understand something that nobody could get you to see for years. Yeah. And just that baby sitting there with nothing but honesty, you don't understand what that baby's bringing to that show. No, they don't. I do. We all do. I'm shaking shit up in this mother. Woo! Talk that talk. <laughs> I've been up here showing y'all things that y'all have not seen for years. That's right. That's fast. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yep. And it's gonna be much more. <laughs> <laughs> Jessica Robin Moore, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. All right. I love you, Mo. You salute to Monique. Salute to Monique. All right. You just made Charlamagne snort. Did you hear? <laughs> <laughs> you hear that? <laughs> All right. When we come back, we got the positive note. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. Morning, everybody. It's DJ MV, the woman that's shaking shit up in this motherfucker. Yeah. Just wow. hilarious. And of course, Charlamagne the guy, the grumpy one. Yes. You got a, a positive note? Well, yes. I just want to remind people to make sure you go out there and get your tickets for the second annual Black Effect Podcast Festival. Uh, yes, the VIP tickets are sold out, but general admission tickets are still available. Um, so make sure you go get your tickets. Uh, Saturday, April 27th, Atlanta, Georgia, Pullman Yards, just like just like where it was last year. Wallow and Gilly going to be on that stage. Lay in Drex from the Poor Minds podcast. Uh, Hard with Decisions, man. Easy. What I said? You said Leia and Drex. You mean I'm Lex so and Drex? I'm so Drex. Damn, I, com- damn, I, com- <laughs> <laughs> I missed their names. Are you combining oh, them? Lex and Drea. I'm so sorry. I combined <laughs> y'all names. Lex and Drea. You know I love y'all Poor Minds podcast. Horrible Decisions, Mandy and Weezy going to be there. Jess Hilarious will be there doing Carefully Reckless Live on that stage so make sure you go get your tickets for saturday april 27th pullman yards in atlanta we're gonna have the food trucks we're gonna have uh panels telling you about the business of podcasting we got the pitch your podcast uh 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 station there a lot of good stuff man just like last year so make sure you go get your tickets eventbrite.com or blackeffect.com slash podcast festival all right well leave us in a positive note the positive note is simply this man social media that damn social media has everybody rushing their goals Remember, comparison is the thief of joy. Focus on your own lane, your own pace, and your own race. Now, that is a good one, and he got that from me. 
I love that. <laughs> that is really, really good. Thank you so much. That's a message everybody can use. Yes. Breakfast Club, bitches! Y'all finished or y'all done?